So I, I don't know if it's the appropriate question, uh, I mean, I, to, for, for this, uh, but one of the ways in which I look, like, so both the positive science programs or what you describe with the rats, and I wonder, is, is that a, a fundamental uh, underlying pr element or process is really getting the system to perceive differences. Right. right, to notice differences, correct? Right. Because oh, yeah. that, that, that is basically what right. we, you know, because Absolutely. part of the getting older and sloppier right. is kind of right. like, how did if, you notice that this is green? If you don't, if you don't, if you, if anybody knows how Annette looks at the world and reads my book, doesn't understand that I, that we are so sympathetic. We are sympathetic. <laughs> yes. I got to put my glass down for this. We are so sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because we see it exactly the, the same. It's a lot of, and I tried to say this before when I said that um, you, you, you should be aware, sparky and aware of all of these, you know, you know and that absolutely relates to the world, to your body, you know, and, and, it, and, it, and, and, and variation and, and the variety in life and what you, and how you're, how you're moving, how you're feeling. I have a lot of cheap advice about that in the book. <laughs> you know, and uh, this is, and that, and I agree with this absolutely. And, and I've been, in many ways, inspired by that. And talking with her, I've learned things from her. Of course, you know, you could you can practice a movement in a gym, you know, a thousand times, and uh, that's a pretty dumb thing to do. <laughs> you know, how about practicing a movement uh, a thousand different ways? Or maybe, maybe practice it 10 different ways each 100 times. Or maybe 100 different ways each 10 times. Better. That makes a <laughs> lot more or sense. Or maybe a few more movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. No, yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. I couldn't help myself. The brain didn't <laughs> learn about how to control itself by, by being a robot. It's not about, and this is another thing that Annette and I just, are, I mean, we're, 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 we're so much in agreement by then we all sit here on our keisters in this, uh, uh, actually, Annette would call this your tush. You probably noticed that if you've been around her for a while, she's big into tushes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how many hours do you spend sitting on your, on your tush? I tell people to keep track of that and, uh, and sort of put yourself on a tush timer. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal that. <laughs> I try to, try to do a little better because we do so many things in a modern environment that is so destructive. I mean, I, one of the things I talk about in my book is, is that because we paved the world, we're actually designed every time we, our foot strikes the ground to have to deal with a little bit of postural instability and uncertainty that comes from that, right? And by paving the world, we've given ourselves up on with uh, hundreds of thousands of moments of brain exercise every year. And, and uh, we also turn our, the bottom of our foot into something that just got to de 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 disorganize it in a way that's going to just got to be a source of pain. And that's what that fasciitis is all about. It's just a natural plastic reaction to, to whacking our foot down on the hard surface all the time. We do lots of stuff that are plastically driving us to hurt and to give up in our, in our flexible mobility that are just, that are so easily avoided. I'm saying this while I'm sitting down, of course. <laughs> <laughs> With your shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to I ask you this. You know, we are running a training program. I see it with adults for sure, but with the little kids, it's almost like I can see it happening as it's happening. And the thing that I want to refer to, and that's again, and that is one of something that I have not figured out how to speak or how to resolve, uh, is uh, the separation between cognition, mind, and body. Because I see those little ones, and I'm talking little, little ones, and when they become aware, let's say, right. the hand that didn't move, and all of a sudden it's there, and then all of a sudden there is this, the one and a two, right? That the formation of cognition and, they're, and then they become more alert, and then they start talking. So the whole idea of the formation or, or the organization of cognitive capacities in my world is like embedded in all the movement and well, complexity. Right. So we, when we talk about it, 
and then you can give tasks that are, are like, let's say, through a computer, mm -hmm. and we are working on this right. stuff. But still, the kid has to move their eyes. And right. they've got to breathe, and they've got to change balance, and they've got... So it's like, do you ha what's your thoughts, if any, of that? Right. And any suggestion on how to drive into more integrative way of speaking about that? Well, uh, the brain uh, is, is massively associating information that's coming from whatever, and it's not so dumb as to throw away information. Mm -hmm. So if, if you look at, a, if you look at a, you know, you can, people have done real-time uh, brain imaging where they have the person watching a movie. And you can watch a movie in which you uh, move across, in which your eyes, in which you show the bot parts of the body. So I can show a movie and in the movie, the guy, I can see the hand and then I can see his head and then I can see the leg and uh, whatever. Now when you do that, the hand area, the area that's controlling sensation from the hand shows up. It's activated. When I, and so I'm watching. It's just all visual. I'm not, I'm not stimulating my hand, right? But it's activated. And when it comes to my head, the area that represents the surface of the skin and the feelings of my head is activated. When I come to my leg, it's activated, right? And that's because the brain knows. Because these things have occurred in association a zillion times, it's associating them connectionally. It's actually plastically associated. It's learned to associate. They learns that when it sees a hand, Probably there's some, going to be some in hand involvement, so it's biasing. It's positively biasing it. It's in all kinds of ways. It's generating. It's a correlational machine. It's generating all of these correlations. It doesn't throw away any of that information. It's in there. Of course, these things are interrelated. When the brain can make these associations, it, they make them. They use them. You're continuously bi biasing the brain. The, bias, the brain is continuously biasing itself based upon these correlated predictions. What, what goes with what? Seeing a hand goes with the physical hand and its engagement. I can do the same thing. I can say a word that relates to the hand, like grab. When I say grab, the word grab, not moving my hand, the hand area light, lights up. And that's because grabbing is has been associated for the history of the brain with the physical hand. Of course, if I said the same thing and my native language is, uh, I don't know, turkey, it doesn't light up course, right? So the point is, is that this is something really important from the point of view of physical therapy or phys therapy that in which the goal, I don't think, I think Annette and I both agree, you should not think of therapy as physical therapy, you should, should think of therapy, right? Because you? nobody yeah. told the brain yeah. about yeah. these yeah. separations. Yeah. Nobody told the brain that, that, that recovering the movement of the arm is just all about movement in the arm. It's about feeling. It's about feeling in the arm and engagement and all the ways it's engaged in everything that relates to moving the arm. And that's all kinds of cognitive as well as all kinds of sensory, as well, perceptual things. This is what, it's all kinds of other things that I might do as I move the arm. Because I never move the arm on a natural state almost all by itself. It's almost always in relation to something else. And of course the brain knows that, smart enough to know that, and take advantage of it. So when it, whenever you get into th thinking about your own physical exercise or therapy, whatever you do, live with your feelings of the body. Live with the, live with the engage, engage yourself in, in the, a more sort of holistic appreciation of what you're doing physically when you move physically. And, and Ed and I, I think, would be pretty sympathetic in relation oh. to that. Well, I think you probably pretty much had enough. <laughs> but I've enjoyed talking to you, and uh, I hope those of you <laughs> when you read when you read the book and you find things you just hate, uh, and that made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs>